When many fish keepers hear about barbs, they think of tiger barbs. Tigers have a reputation as nasty little fish that will chew the fins off your bed as an angelfish. They aren't quite as bad as their reputation, and they can be managed. Still, beginners would probably be better off with easier fish. In this video, I'll explain the basics of barbs and tell you about my favorites. Four beautiful, peaceful species that don't get too big and are easy to keep. I'm Bob, and this is Sonny's Fish Room. Tiger barbs are probably the most well-known barbs. They jostle each other around to establish their place in a hierarchy. So by keeping them in a large group, their aggression is diffused among each other and not taken out on other tank residents. The term barb probably comes from barbinae, what used to be a subfamily of cyprinids. That's a larger group of fish that used to include minnows and carp, but which has been divided up into 10 smaller groups. Minnow-like fish that we call barbs are found throughout Africa and Asia. Barb and barbine come from the Latin word barba, which means beard. Some members of the group have sensory organs called barbells around their mouths, which people thought resembled beards. A lot of different types of fish are called barbs, and some can get really big. The giant barb, Catlocarpio siamensis, is from the Indo-Chinese Peninsula in Southeast Asia. It can grow three meters long. That's almost 10 feet. In aquarium stores, you'll sometimes see young tinfoil barbs, Barbonimus schwannenfeldii. This species is native to the Malayan Peninsula. It doesn't get as big as the giant barb, but it tops out at a tank busting 14 inches, or 35 centimeters. Tinfoil barbs need a tank of at least 70 gallons. Still, there are lots of barbs in the hobby that are a more manageable size, reaching only two or three inches at most. For this video, I've picked out four easy beginner barbs. I think the old standby species still have a lot to offer. These four have been in the hobby for a long time, and with good reason. They're colorful, peaceful, undemanding and they don't get really big. The gold barb, the odessa barb, the rosy barb, and the cherry barb. In nature these species live in groups and form shoals so you should try to keep six or more together. Like most barbs they'll take a variety of prepared or frozen foods. They tolerate a range of pH and water hardness and they'll spawn on the bottom in the gravel and plants. To breed them, I put them in a bare tank with a breeder box. That's a gravel-filled container with a screen on top that I attach a plant to. There's a video on this channel on how to make breeder boxes. The fish lay their eggs in the plants. The eggs fall through the screen so that the parents can't get to them. The fry will eat golden pearls, reefroids, and other fine powder fry foods. The gold barb, Barbotes semifasciolatus is native to the Red River drainage in China and Vietnam. The yellow form that's most often seen in the hobby was developed by Thomas Schubert of Camden, New Jersey in the 1960s. I've looked for references on how he developed this strain, but I couldn't find any. Less common in the hobby is the wild form of the fish, sometimes called the green barb. I recently bought some of these wild-type fish from a member of my local aquarium club, who bred them outside in a pond last summer. I've crossed them with the gold morphs that I have. I'm waiting for the fry to grow out to see if I can figure out the genetics involved. Gold barbs do all right in an unheated tank at room temperature. The Bench Atlas lists their temperature range as 64 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit or 18 to 24 degrees Celsius. My fish have been a little colder than that, down to 58 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter. I've had good spawns at 77 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 degrees Celsius. The gold barbs that I've kept have done well in my hard tap water, but I seem to get better spawns in rainwater, which is soft and acidic. Gold barbs reach a length of about 3 inches. Pethia patamaya is known as the Odessa barb. It was said to have first been kept by hobbyists in Odessa in the Ukraine in the 1970s. Its origin was unknown to hobbyists until it was discovered in Myanmar in a pond outside Mandalay and nearby 
in the Chindwin River. Males have a deep red lateral band. Odessa barbs grow to about three inches. They also will do well at room temperatures. The website Seriously Fish lists their temperature range at 16 to 25 degrees Celsius, about 61 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. For breeding, I raise the temperature to 78 degrees Fahrenheit, or 26 degrees Celsius. Seriously Fish also said that the species is found in water that flows over limestone deposits. I haven't been able to confirm that, but I found this species does okay in my tap water, which has a general hardness of 180 parts per million and a carbonate hardness of 80 parts per million. I also know two people who breed and raise them in soft, acidic water. Pethia conchonius, the rosy barb, ranges from Afghanistan through Pakistan, India, Nepal, Bangladesh, and Burma, or Myanmar. Males are a deep pink and females are bronze. There are neon and glass morphs, with males being lighter pink and females more yellow, and a long fin strain as well. I've had a friend tell me that his rosy barbs ate some of the stem plants in his planted tank. I keep tougher plants like java fern and anubias, and the rosy barbs haven't bothered them. Rosy barbs will breed when they're about two and a half inches long, and a really big rosy barb may reach six inches in length. Room temperatures are fine for this subtropical species, and the Bench Atlas lists their temperature range from 64 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit, or 18 to 22 degrees Celsius. The Bench Atlas also recommends soft water with a pH of about 6.5. They've done all right in my hard alkaline tap water, but I've had the best results breeding them in rainwater at temperatures in the mid to high 70s. Last but not least is the smallest of the group, the cherry barb, or Puntius titea. Males are a pinkish red and females are less pink and more bronze. There are also long fin and albino morphs. They come from Sri Lanka, an island off the coast of India. They're found in shallow streams. Although they're common in the hobby and inexpensive, their numbers in the wild are low due to pollution, habitat loss, and collection for the aquarium trade. The Bench Atlas recommends a pH of 6.0 to 6.5 and a general hardness of 12 parts per million at most. Bench lists their preferred temperature range as 73 to 79 degrees Fahrenheit or 23 to 26 degrees Celsius. They've done okay in my unheated tanks and put up with temperatures in the mid-60s. Cherry barbs are small and a little on the shy side, but are happy in a tank with a lot of plants. The males are a little territorial, and I came across one study that found that redder males are more dominant over less red males. I have to admit that I haven't been as successful with this species as I'd like. I've been able to spawn them over one of my breeder boxes, but only got one or two fry each time. I found a technical article by researchers at the University of Peridenia in Sri Lanka, which explored ways to spawn them. The researchers found that they only spawned in a flow-through tank fed by water from a local pond and not in unfiltered tanks, so it could be that they need fairly high oxygenation to spawn. YouTuber David Ramsey posted a video on his channel on spawning cherry barbs. Dave put three pears into a five-gallon tank crowded with java moss and got lots of fry. I hope you found this video helpful. As always, I look forward to hearing from you. If you have questions or want to share your experiences or observations of these or other barb species, please leave me a comment. If you like my videos, it would really help me out if you subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.